that's then finally go to the uh, to the full problem that we were to address or just adding the biomass on alternative um, in there as well so uh, what happens well instead of just having the option uh, when you have this green field in which you can make the investment instead of just having the, op the option to invest in gas fire plant you might instead uh, do the investment in the biomass plant so if we do that you know we're given basically what the uh, total mpv is and itself it, this does not depend on the price of gas so just a fixed number and this fixed number of that investment is called v of r where r stands for renewable um, but there is, of course, a cost to doing this, uh, to getting this MPV, and the cost of doing that is giving up the option to invest in this gas-fired uh, plant, this gas-fired uh, generator in the future. So that's what you're giving up. So you have to basically compare the uh, the uh, option value of waiting uh, until you might do the perhaps in the future the uh, investments in either the gas fired plant or in the bio biomass plants and we have to compare that to uh, making the investment in the biomass plant um, at once so this is of course going to depend on the gas price p because it's option to invest in in gas in the gas fired plant and the gas fired plant itself will depend on p so also this this opportunity cost of of, in, of investing in biomass dep will depend on p so again we have to uh, to do the the, the, the full-fledged uh, option analysis real option analysis so again we have to identify the various uh, regimes um, and uh, make sure that we sort of solve the equations in these various regimes so in this case when p is really large then we know that this option value of investing in this gas fire plant is really low so then the opportunity cost of uh, of giving up this option to invest is uh, is not not that big and then of course vr is uh, getting vr immediately by investing in the biomass plant today that gets more and more attractive but when p is smaller then of course uh, this is no longer so so indeed uh, there is here uh, some value in in waiting so what is the uh, the strategy well, again it's a variant of what we did before so as i mentioned we have to identify these various regimes so if indeed P is really large, so the, the cost of gas is really large, then we don't really want, we don't really foresee any possibility to at any point in time, again, invest in this gas fire plant. So then going directly towards this VR to make the biomass investment will be the best thing. So for really high P, there must be a region regime in which we immediately say, well, let's not wait and make this, this, uh, this biomass investment at once. On the other side, for really low P, it's going to be very attractive to make this investment in the gas fire plant immediately, just like we had before. Right? So if P is equal to zero in particular, of course, uh, we get the, the, the value of the, uh, of the gas fire plant and just making the uh, assumption, which is actually what we have been doing all the time, that the gas fire plant at cost zero price gas price zero is more attractive than the biomass plant then certainly for p equals zero it will make the um, the uh, investment in the uh, in the gas fire plant immediately so in this, this regime on the left hand side we uh, we will get uh, the present value of uh, the net present value of investing in gas fire plant immediately but now in between of course there's going to be some regime in which we do not know we still have to figure out what we want do we want to wait uh, do we want to, uh, well, we will want to wait here, but will we in the future, will we want to make the biomass investment, which will happen if this price of gas keeps growing up to some threshold, which you call PR. Or, on the other hand, if P drops sufficiently far, and get closer and closer to zero, at some point, which you call PG, is going to be optimal to make the investment to uh, to get this gas fire plant so get, to get the npv in here but if you're some, somewhere in between these two thresholds we have to wait so here actually again we have an option to make some investment an option to wait essentially so again this option to wait will satisfy the, uh, the bellman equation with our cash flows which again is our familiar bellman equation again with some coefficients different coefficients here right presumably so i'll call them e1 and e2 
times these power functions, p to the power beta 1 and p to the power beta 2, which is basically the, the generic solution that we know. So what remains to, uh, to do is figure out you know, what are these constants, e1 and e2, and what are these thresholds, pg, which will make the investment switch instead to making the investment in the gas fire plant, or pr, when the price gets high enough for us to make the investment in the biomass plant. So there's four unknown, unknowns here, so e1, e2, pg, and pr. So how are we going to fix those unknowns? Well, again, by looking at the boundaries, right? So that's a standard uh, standard way of doing this, but now we have to have a look at what those boundaries are for this uh, for this particular regime. Uh, here the boundaries are not zero, because once we are near zero, we will already have, we already sit in this regime in which we have the NPV for the gas-fired investment. It's not infinity, it's not included here, because here we already have invested a long time ago in the uh, biomass plant, but they are finite, they are both PG and PR, so they don't draw, uh, drift away towards zero or infinity. So these two finite boundaries. Uh, so in particular what we cannot do here is argue that at either of these values, this option value is going to be reduced to zero. So in particular we cannot argue that either E1 or E2 has to be zero because these boundaries zero and infinity, they are not uh, these values zero and P equals zero and P are equals R infinity, are not part of the domain in which this particular equation is valid. It's only defined between PG and PR. So we do want to figure out, of course, what PG and PR are, and we do want to figure out what E1 and E2 are, but we will do that by value matching and smooth pasting on either side now. So both on this side where we make the investment uh, at this gas price uh, threshold, make the investment in the gas fire plant, and at PR where the, the gas price is pretty high, so I'm, I'm to PR, we'll make instead the investment to, uh, in the biomass plant, which is where PR, and on either of these boundaries, we'll have to make sure that values are nicely matched, and that this, this function over here is nicely, smoothly fitted, differentiably fitted to either of these, uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So that's going to be two conditions over here, value matching and smooth pasting. Two conditions over here, value matching and smooth pasting, and then need four unknowns that we need to determine. So four conditions, four unknowns. So let's have a look at those, uh, at those conditions. So let's remind ourselves first, you know, what are we going to smooth paste and value match on? Well, on the right hand side, it's just VR, right? That's, uh, that's just a given number. The left hand side, it's some function. Well, what function? Well, a function that we know, right? This is function, the value of the gas fire plant minus the investment cost that we have already computed uh, a bit ago. So it's just some function of P that we need to match smoothly to. So what function was that? Well, if you remember, it was this particular, this particular function. So it's this. Uh, VG, the price, the value of the gas fire plant as a function of the gas price, what was particularly the value when this again, when this gas fire plant is in the production phase, but otherwise you would just wait a bit longer for P to drop below A. So we can already assume that this PG must be below A actually. And this is the value of this uh, plant, uh, the, the uh, the production value essentially of this, uh, this gas fire plant. So it consists of this, this cash flow part plus this option part to suspend operations if price after we build the plant again drifts upwards across this uh, threshold uh, equal to the electricity price. So we've seen that before. So this is what Vg of P is. It's some function of P is, like slightly complicated function with linear part here and the part which is a power function P to the power beta. Okay. So what does it look like? Well, the, uh, these two uh, thresholds here are, of course, PG and PR, so this is P. If you are below PG, we will uh, be in the regime in which uh, we have the value of the gas fire, or the NPV, I should say, the gas fire plant, which is this, uh, essentially this, uh, this dashed red line, so it looks a bit like a straight line, but in fact it is precisely this function that we have here, minus I, so it, uh, it is actually a curved uh, thing, which we, just on the picture we, we cannot see the curvature that much in this uh, zoomed in version. 
And on the right hand side, what we are value matching and smooth pasting to is this, uh, this constant VR, which is the entity of investing in the renewable. And in between, so between PG and PR in this regime, we actually have this value of weighting. This value of weighting here is this, uh, this black line. If we have to construct this, this black line, so in other words, we have to choose E1, E2, PG, and PR in such a way that it fits nicely in smooth fashion to the uh, to this expression here, to the value of the gas fire plant. And it also fits nicely and smoothly to this constant, the MPV, of investing in the renewable plant. And that's actually what you see in this picture. So we have to figure out what are E1 and E2 and PG and PR, which make this happen. So let's just write down those two uh, uh, boundaries and the conditions at those boundaries. So at PR, which is this upper threshold in which we think, uh, oh, let's no longer wait, but immediately invest in the renewable plant, then we have to make sure that at that particular PR, so I plugged in a PR, the values are matched. So the value of waiting at PR must be equal to the value of investing right at that moment in the renewable plant, which is VR. And you also have to make sure that this occurs in a smooth fashion, so the derivatives should also be equal. So the derivative of the left hand side, and then plugging in P equals PR, which is this expression, first term, second term. So again, remember, neither E1 nor E2 must be, will, will typically be zero. But you should make both these terms. On the right hand side, just a constant function, VR is just a constant number, take the derivative, that's actually zero. So that's the uh, boundary condition at PR. So what happens at PG and the lower boundary at which we'll make the investment into the gas fire plant. Again, here we have um, a value matching. So if you plug in PG for the price, E1 times this threshold price to the power beta 1 plus E2 times this threshold price to the power beta 2, that should nicely match up to the value, the NPV of investing in the gas fire plant at that, at that point. So, and we know what VG is, so it's a slightly complicated function of P, but it's this, just this value of this gas fire plant that we computed before. And of course, we also have to smooth paste, so make sure that the, uh, the derivatives also match up here, and that's a similar computation. Take the derivatives, plug in P equals PG on either side, so in particular, so since VG depends on price as well, we'll get some expression here. And that's the second condition. So here we have four conditions, and there's four things that we need to solve. E1, E2, and PG, and PR. So now it's up to us to solve four equations and four unknowns. So to some extent we can do that. Uh, in particular what we can do is we can fairly easily eliminate E1 and E2. Um, and that leads to... Uh, two new conditions, so eliminate two things, so to rem what, what to remain will be two equations, which only have PG and PR in them, and no longer have E1 and E2, because we've eliminated those. Uh, but these two conditions, actually, these are sort of hard to solve, or uh, analytically, we tend to clean off solve them. What we can do, of course, is uh, solve those uh, in a numerical fashion. So these equations that I wrote down here, you can try to sort of derive them yourself by by eliminating E1 and E2 from these four conditions. But this is what you get, and this is also what you'll find in uh, Morton and Nesa. They're, they're called, uh, written down in slightly different form, but they are actually equivalent to this. And they're called equations 15 and 16 in the paper. So what's left for us is just to determine well, what are the PG and PR that satisfy these two equations. Well, they're not linear equations, so it's, it's harder, as I mentioned. So again, we have to, to solve these in a numerical fashion, typically, when we take the parameter values for you know, all the parameters that you have, like A, like uh, the, the, the drift and the volatility of this process, and R, the investment costs. And once we plug those in, we can use our computer, essentially, use some program, for instance, Excel, which, uh, which can do this, or some other program, uh, to actually solve two nonlinear equations in two nodes. And actually, that's what you are going to do yourself. Um, for the last, for the third assignment. So what, is the, uh, what does the uh, solution look like? Uh, so here I plotted actually these two uh, threshold prices. So the threshold price for gas, which is the blue line, so the PG, 
and the threshold price, the PR for investing in the renewable, the threshold price where the gas, where the gas price is sufficiently high to make uh, investment in a renewable and biomass plant uh, uh, optimal. I plotted those, those thresholds as a function of the volatility actually of this gas price. So you see that as the volatility increases, actually this domain between the PR, the, the upper threshold and this lower threshold, the PG, gets wider and wider and wider. So it's a larger domain in which it's optimal to just keep waiting a little bit longer before we actually pin ourselves down to making this investment to give up all this option value. Why is that, of course? Well, options are typically have a value that increases with volatility. So the larger the volatility, the larger this option value of waiting, so the larger the opportunity cost actually of making an actual decision for investment. So we need a large value of this investment to make sure that indeed this, uh, this is optimal at that, uh, at that point. So that's the first point that I made here actually. Um, so in particular, this green line is, is increasing here. Um, which you, you might say is surprising in the sense that the value of investing in the renewable plant itself does not actually depend on the gas price, but again, it's the opportunity cost here, giving up the value of, uh, of uh, waiting and perhaps at some point in the future finding that's optimal to actually invest in the gas fired plant. That thing, that's valuable and that has a value that does depend on P. So also the value of um, the gas-fired plant itself increases as the volatility goes up because remember this uh, the value of the gas-fired plant was part of this cash flow value, this perpetuity value, plus some option value, namely the option, the positive option value to suspend operations if P uh, at some point in the future after we build that the, the plant might increase again. So this uh, V itself, uh, VG, we call this the value of the gas-fired plant also depends positively on the uh, on the volatility but you know, in this case the option of waiting outweighs this uh, this option of suspending operation so you see that all in all the threshold price for gas actually does decline slightly as uh, uh, as sigma as this volatility goes up so let's wrap up here what we have, what have we learned here so basically, we, uh, from a you know, methodolo methodological point of view, what we did was you know, see how to apply this general solution strategy. What, what, so what do we do? We identify you know, what is the, the uncertain parameter here, the uncertain uh, variable, so we see the price of gas. We then recognize that there will be different regimes, something in which we will make immediate investment, something in which we will wait. So we have to ident identify these regimes for this value function. There are different forms in these different regimes. Or what forms? Well, in each of the regimes, they will this this function will satisfy some Bellman equation, the appropriate Bellman equation, so the appropriate form in particular of the cash flows in that particular regime. So we can solve those Bellman equations in each of these regimes separately. And then there will be some unknown because we find general solutions. And so how do we fix those? Those unknowns, so these coefficients, uh, perhaps, and also these thresholds. Uh, well, we do that by actually uh, looking at the endpoints of the regimes and making sure that uh, values here make sense. So, in particular, when p goes to zero or p goes to infinity, if that's part of a particular regime, I have to figure out you know, what's happening in that particular limit. And secondly, when actually on one side this regime, or perhaps on two sides, this regime might sort of border on another regime. We want to make sure that here we get value matching and smooth pasting. So that gives us two conditions there and these thresholds. So that's methodologically what, what we learned. So economically, what we uh, again saw here is that optionality here has a value. So we sometimes it pays to wait essentially, but it, it also, also pays, right? It has a value to be able to do something in the future. So for, for instance, switch off. A plant if the price grows, the price of gas grows too high, and optimal decisions typically take into account those values because they, these values will appear in your decision making as opportunity costs. Now, in particular, we have to take a particular look at how this value indeed uh, depends on one parameter, which is the uncertainty. So typically, we see that you know, we know that the options basically 
grow in value as, as volatility grows. So this, the impact of these option value things is going to be bigger and bigger as uncertainty or volatility of this gas price process in this case uh, is growing. So that's basically uh, the economic points that we have uh, seen or confirmed again. So this is uh, again the uh, the end of this uh, presentation, uh, so the end of this uh, part of more than So what we'll do next uh, lecture, as it will be bit short actually, is we'll have a look at uh, um, some real life uh, parameters in the sense of, we, uh, I would like to introduce in particular to some units, right? So if, uh, if you look at the paper by, by Morton and Asia, they do all this analysis that we just did, and then they are going to calibrate this to actual market values. So in order to do that, we have to have a little bit of a view of what are, you know, what kinds of market values are sort of typical market values and what are actually typical units that we measure those in and how do we compute from things that we can observe in the market in practice, how can we compute some of the parameters that go into basically these uh, these uh, these equations like the I or the, uh, the, uh, the PG and PR, what do they mean if you get a number, so what, what kind of units, how do we compare those numbers to things that we can see in reality. So in order to do that, the next lecture we'll have a look at some real life facts basically of producing electricity. Okay, see you then.